I just wanted to let you know that I'm a Microsoft employee, but I do not represent Microsoft in this video. Hello, and welcome to another episode of EchoCraft. We're starting out today at DC's wonderful end shop. Ah, oh, I just came across a deal I can't refuse. Depth Strider Mending Boots for one diamond. Yes, please. Oh, not four diamonds. Just one. Thank you. That's an awesome deal. What's in here? Yeah, at the moment I can't afford an elytra or shulker shells. I think I'm going to put the rest of my diamonds into this ender chest, even though I don't have an ender chest at home. But at least I have two in this ender chest, so I know I can buy two more items here if I want to. I'm trying to figure out where is... Oh, Boone's over there, I think. Yes. He has an eye of ender for me so I can make an ender chest. Oh, there we go. He's flying. That way I can get an ender chest at my base. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Yay. I have ender. My very first pickaxe enchant. What am I going to get? Silk touch. Yes. Guaranteed silk touch. Go. And? Oh, just silk touch, but still. Yes. Unbreaking three. Sounds promising enough. And? Woo! Efficiency four. Yes. Soon enough, I'll have better and better gear. And I'm also excited about my mending and breaking three, respiration three diamond helmet. I've been wanting to swim better for so long. Still need aqua affinity, but my water skills are definitely improving. Last night, I started planning out my breeder a bit, and I'm actually really excited with the color scheme that I'm going with, which uh, you can kind of see right now, but not the full picture. I discovered that snow is actually a really cool block. Like, look at this color. Snow is quickly becoming one of my favorite white blocks because it just, it looks so friendly. And it's also really, really cheap. To get some snow, all I need to do is just run around outside and do this with a shovel. This is not even a fancy shovel, it's a stone shovel. Just like that, I've picked up a couple snowballs and I can turn them into eight snow. And now I have 14 because I already had some in the inventory. And it snows here on a regular basis. One of the downsides of doing this outside though is that this can easily happen. I can easily accidentally pick up a dirt block or sand block or destroy snow over there because you need silk touch to pick up snow. But there is an even more convenient way to get snow. So here we've got this little snowman. And what I can do here is just click and I'm harvesting snow. And I can also do both. Apparently, if I get the angle right, yeah, I'm harvesting snow from both. And if I had a fancier shovel, this would go even faster. And a shovel broke. And look at that. That's how quick that was to make another 16 blocks. So really, really quick. And that's with a really crappy shovel. And I didn't have to run. I could just click. I want to build a snowman in the nether and see what happens when I do that. So let's go. Oh, he does not seem happy. So no snowman in the nether. Apart from the snow ceiling, I do have a shortage on lamps though. So there's supposed to be blocky lamps that could either be glowstone or sea lanterns or, you know, something along those lines. And nobody's selling sea lanterns right now and I find glowstone a bit too ugly. So what I think I want to do instead is the shroom lights or whatever they're called. And for that, we need to go into the nether. The warped forest. I'm not going to look down. There's so many endermen down there. So I think these are harvested with a hoe, as are the lamps, I think. Yes. Harvesting these lamps takes quite a while. I haven't been recording my time, but I've been at it for quite a while, and uh, I only have just over half a stack of shroom lights. I think I'm going to call it quits for right now because, uh, yeah, it's it's tedious work. And I don't like hanging out in the nether that much, to be honest. Like, it's pretty, but it's scary, and I don't like scary. See if they look okay. That might just work out. I still need to put in a composter though. So let me do that real quick before I forget. And there we go. One composter. And now the future farmer has everything they need. I'm trying to get this villager breeding chamber up and running as quickly as possible. And right now I'm in the process of building the little drop chute for the baby villagers. And I realized that as a part of building this drop chute, I had to also dig out the rest of the facade here. Um, there's nothing going on behind the facade. I just needed to get the first block or two of the rest of the tower going so I don't disrupt the breeder if I decide to build this again later. I'm also really glad that I upgraded to Feather Falling 4 earlier this evening. I've fallen off of these ledges a lot and I just fell off again. I think 
the next thing I really should do is bring in some villagers and test out that this actually works. And if it does work, then I can continue with building some interesting redstone-y minecart stuff around here for transporting villagers. I'm using a very reliable way to transport villagers, and that is boats. Letting you go. Yes. Locking you in. And you became a farmer instantly. Awesome. Okay, this is a failure. These villagers were sleeping, and now they're apparently just standing on their beds. They did not go into the little pod in the middle. The wooden post is one block too high. Okay, they are sleeping again. And I'm about to turn the corner. Yes! Woo! Do we see carrots being exchanged? Maybe, yes! Oh no! No, the baby's up there! No! Maybe the fact that the babies end up jumping up on the bed is actually not the worst thing in the world. Because as soon as night falls, they end up sleeping in the bed. And then the next morning, they apparently end up on the pillar. And by on the pillar, I mean they fall through and end up in the in here. Yeah, having babies glitch out every now and then and not always fall straight down is not the worst. I'm so glad I finally finished my little villager picker-upper system. This is the lava activation button that I don't want to use right now, but actually I should because I'm about to go AFK. Yep, lava button. And I'm pretty sure the iron golem that spawned over here is not going to blame me for that, or at least I hope so. But that's basically my auto-killing mechanism for when I'm not actively picking up villagers because I don't want them to die due to entity cramming. Whenever I want to summon a new villager, I push this button back here. Or I can push this button to push them forward. So once I'm done with one of these minecarts, I can just return it into here. I have been doing a lot of digging. Like, a lot, a lot. Let me swing around and show you. Look at that. I don't have a beacon yet, so it's taken me forever to mine around here. And so far I have mined almost 25,000 stone in this season. And this is episode two. I've marked out roughly where individual iron farm components are going to go. So I can figure out how far away it needs to be from the nearest other structure. Tearing up this landscape has me super worried. Like, what if I'm not skilled enough to make this look good afterwards. Like, what if I've just messed this up forever? If I do mess up here, hopefully I'll do better next time, wherever that is. I'm about to log off for the day, so I figured I'd use my camera account to take a look at what I've accomplished today, because that's really all I've been doing today, is digging. I dug this hole. It's still a work in progress, but you can maybe get a sense of just how much I got done. Like, this villager breeder looked so big at the time I built it, it looked like I dug out so much. And then you turn around, and you're like, nope, not even close. That, and I really wish I had a haste 2 beacon. The digging would be so much faster if I had a beacon. But at least I have efficiency 5, so that helps. So as you can see from up here, I've already marked out just how big this hole needs to be. And uh, I probably will hold off on digging into the top of this mountain here until after I've built parts of the iron farm because I'm pretty sure I don't actually need to carve out all of this mountainside. And I'd like to leave at least some of it in its natural state. This has taken forever, but I'm almost done. So close. Just taking out the final layer. And final two rocks. One and two. Bam. What do you think? How many stone did I mine? Wham. That's a lot. More than 36,000 stone and a bit more than 6,000 dirt. And a couple thousand here and there of the other stuff. So I am about to head over to Cairo's base with a whole bunch of presents because he said he's trying to get rid of crap out of his chest and among his crap is diamond gear for some reason. So I want to go pick up that diamond armor. I really don't want to see that diamond armor go to waste and uh, I did upgrade my paths a little bit so I don't feel like I'm about to die in the nether. 
but uh, I didn't bring all my gear with me this time around anyway because uh, I'm still afraid that uh, on my way to wherever his base is, and I don't really know where his base is, but I'm afraid that uh, I might die. I might come across some Winway paths and die. DC has an army of iron golems deployed to uh, kill all the magma cubes that keep spawning around here. It's actually a really awesome strategy. Without them, this area is super dangerous. This sounds like a hallway I don't want to go down. And uh, this is where Branzi's base is apparently. Nope. Keep going, I guess. Okay, taking an entirely different path. I think this is where Civ's portal is. I think it's past the shopping district portal. Okay, it looks like a Cairo might be there. Hey, awesome. Hello Cairo, please don't lead me to my death. Uh oh. Let me draw the fire. There we go. And we're going down a sketchy path. This is not looking good. Why Cairo? I did this last season too. There's no way I would have found this by myself. I'm glad I have a guide. Why? Why are you doing this to me? I hate one wide paths. Nah. How am I gonna how am I gonna get back without an elytra? We're still not done? You're kidding me, right? I feel like he's just doing this for fun. Upstairs? Above I'm crawling up this thing with shift. I'm so scared. This is like the worst. It's like have to parkour to get to Cairo's base. If I had known. Why, Cairo? Why? Oh, it's like in the blue forest area. What? Why are what are we doing? Here. Okay. Yay, we're here. And he left. Oh. I'm leaving a little present of my own here. I just happen to have snowballs on me. He definitely needed bamboo. I don't know if he needs cactus or any of these uh, starter food items. I also brought some cocoa beans and some jungle logs to grow them on. So um, I don't feel like this is a fair exchange for uh, a whole bunch of diamond armor. But uh, thank you, Cairo. Super, super nice of you. I like what he's done with this place. He's upgraded a normal villager house. It's a cozy place to hang out. Cute bedroom. I uh, should not be checking chests in a bedroom, but whatever, it's Minecraft. I know he has a raid farm, so uh, what else could that be? And I'm assuming that thing over there is his iron farm and some villagers he trades with as far as I'm aware. And that's where he gets some of his gear. Oh, looks like I have just enough quartz to finish this little platform. I tried making it out of something cheaper and it just looked bad. So I decided to go with expensive things and then uh, I get to enjoy it for the rest of the season. I definitely need to dig into this mountain a bit if I want to build that one last uh, fourth pillar down there. I'm finally in the process of building up these uh, villager pods and the iron golem spawning area with water and stuff. And uh, I did realize that I definitely need to build a ceiling over this entire thing or else this water is going to freeze. I'm using a combination of a couple different YouTube videos and I'm going to link to all three of them. One of them is Nambom's video on how to create this farm. The second one is uh, somebody's uh, own design, like color scheme wise, that inspired me here. And the third one is... Uh, the fix to use some glass blocks on the side of the beds to prevent the villagers from just wandering off. These snow blocks might be temporary or they might just be a middle snow layer that I'll like decorate up later when I have time to get more expensive blocks to make this pretty. But I do want to get some kind of a ceiling in and now I definitely know that I absolutely have to have some kind of a ceiling. The one thing that's really obvious to me now is that I need more lighting, but I'm probably not going to solve that in this episode because I don't have really awesome cheap lighting. I might have to spawn proof this thing because it's kind of close to the villager pods. I don't have spawn proofing stuff on me though. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Iron golem spawned where I didn't want him. Hi. That was interesting. So this iron golem thinks the diamond enemy. That's really unfortunate. How do I get my stuff now? Uh, oh, problem solved ish, at least for right the second. My first priority is spawn proofing this thing. Yes, the iron farm is fully operational now. There should be an iron. Yep, there we go. Iron golem dropped. Oh, there's the zombie. And so as the zombie makes its way over there, it should then trigger an iron golem over here. There we go. One thing that's really cool about this farm is that I can pause the, um, the zombie anytime I want. 
And uh, this is going to come in handy whenever I want to do maintenance on any of these towers because I've effectively taken all the towers except this one offline. But in this case, I actually have something else I want to try to do. Wait, I'm going to let him go around one more time. But I do want to see if I can give this guy a parrot head because that would be super, super funny. Okay, let's see if I can give him a parrot head. Yes! <laughs> also, does Polly want a cracker? No. Oh, Polly doesn't want a cracker. It doesn't seem like Polly wants anything I've offered it. I guess I'll just let you go. Bye bye Polly. I built the rest of the crop farm off camera and uh, now I'm in the process of loading villagers and I'm really hoping that it's actually going to be fairly painless. Thanks to rails. Let's see. Is somebody going to pop down? Yep. And here you go. Off you go and running after him. Popping down one level. Yes. So I just take out this rail, this one above, and then I can kill this thing. No! That did not happen with the one up there. Crap! <laughs> I guess it's not going to be as easy as I thought. Huh. I don't think they can throw carrots across the two wide divide, so I probably have to get rid of the trapdoor. Yep. Awesome. You might also notice that I have a lot fewer beds than I had last time. My last version in season one had the issue that these guys started breeding every now and then. And I realized that they don't actually need beds at all to do work. Hopefully by getting rid of the beds, I've also gotten rid of their uh, breeding habits. I just got proof that the breeder still works, so awesome. Squee! Squee, squee, squee! I got bread! I got bread! It's the first time ever I've gotten bread. Like, it's only one piece of bread, but still, it's way better than zero bread. Oh, I'm so excited. There is hope left for my wheat farmer, after all. It's a really weird thing to be excited about, but oh my gosh, bread. I got bread. I got bread. <laughs> Fancy new idea from lagging, and that is that starting in 116, if uh, the wheat farmer throws wheat at another farmer, it's actually going to be wheat and not bread. So I'm hoping that uh, in addition to the wheat farm up here that produces bread, I can have a wheat farm down here that automatically produces wheat. I'm hoping this works, and if it doesn't work, I can just turn this back into a manual wheat farm. I think it's definitely time to call it quits for this episode. Um, I got a ton of stuff done. I dug all of this out, built the crop farm, and built my iron farm. And while there's a lot of work still to be done, there's also more episodes coming out in the future. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like. And if you're looking forward to more of them, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, goodbye. I'm a Microsoft employee, but I made this video on my own time with my own opinions. I do not represent Microsoft in this video. Uh -oh. uh, can, I, can I ask for another favor? Can I have a, like a, a stack of arrows? <laughs> oh, I got so. Oh, come with me. You can take all the arrows you can carry. To the map farm! Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I still have all my air bubbles at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah they're just in the conduit, so you will never lose them. All right. You need oh, arrows? that's true. Yeah, I'm just going to take a couple stacks. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, take one.